Okay, for starters, we're gonna get just a, a small length. Um, if you're gonna do this for a strap, uh, you know, for a pack or, you know, a, a bag or something like that, even making a belt, you need to obviously measure. Um, and the, what we'll call this the warp, using uh, the weaving parlance, or weaving terminology this is actually going to be what you're using the weavers to weave in and out of and so this needs to be the actual length that you need it to be maybe a little bit longer so my rule of thumb is you know get what you need in this little bit more um, just in case it always tends to work out better that way uh, so for this demo we're gonna make uh, we're gonna make sort of like a a, a, a strap for a um, like a headband uh, so that you could use, you know, you could use this to carry objects uh, just with your forehead um, and the rope and that would trail behind you holding, you know, a bundle of firewood or a bundle of reeds or something like that. Uh, so we don't need it that long uh, to do that. Uh, probably make it, uh, probably make it this long. Actually, I'll just measure my, my arm span is probably good enough, all right? So from shoulder to shoulder, about like that much. So with this type of um, uh, cordage, it tends to want to fray when you cut it. And so uh, I've got duct tape here to cut a uh, piece of duct tape uh, to go ahead and... Uh, just wrap around the piece, the the width that I want, at the well, at, at the length that I want, at the place that I want, and then uh, I take my cutting tool or my scissors, and I just snip that in half. And now the, the end that I snipped off is not going to fray, and the end that I need is not going to fray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a fisherman's knot, and to review that, I'm just making an overhand knot, which is a Oh, yeah, and then I'm going to put my other end through the hole or the eye of the overhand knot that I just made. And then I'm going to make an overhand knot over the body of the one that I'm putting the loop through. So I just make an overhand knot over that. So it looks like when you're done, it looks like it is the uh, rope, it, rope is shake, shaking hands. And then I pull it together like that. Okay, so this is a, a single fisherman's knot. There's double and triple fisherman's knot, so on and so forth. So it's a good way to kind of splice together two pieces of rope. And it holds pretty good, um, like so. All right. This type of rope is bulky. Uh, and this is made of Cecil. I'm not quite sure what plant that is. I'll have to look it up. But uh, it's it's made from Cecil. And uh, so it, it, it's got a lot of memory to it. It's pretty tough. It's pretty strong, but it's rough. I wouldn't want this against my skin. It's kind of itchy. So anyways, I'm going to open this up, and then I want to take another length of the rope, and we're going to use three strands, okay, for our weaving. And so I'm going to put in between the eye or the connector of the um, fisherman's knot that we just made, I'm going to put another piece of length of string or cordage in there, a rope, and then I'm just going to make a knot there. And then that way I can cinch this together and then these two will hold on to each other like that. Okay, so it looks something like that, okay? Not the most prettiest of things, but we're gonna go more for uh, form than fashion right now, okay? So then of course, now I next, I want to go ahead and get the actual length that I need for the middle part here. And I'm gonna cut, again, do the same thing. Need a piece of um, cordage. I'm going to go up a little bit on the cordage. And so I'm taking a piece of duct tape here and I'm going up a little bit so I can cut this and be able to tie this to the other piece. Okay. I want this just like that. Okay. And then I can, I've got a, I've got a length away from that for extra good measure I go ahead and cut this in half like that all right
it and we don't have to worry about that fraying okay so now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure I'm gonna loop this basically around my my toe there if for you for a piece that's really long we're going for something that's really short um, just for the sake of this demo you can get a hook and attach it to a tree or to a wall or something far away and then you can um, weave and you know and just kind of inch yourself forward uh, so I just really want to show the technique you know I'm sure you'll be able to figure out a way to attach this to something far away if this was you know 12 feet you know or something like that six feet of length that you need it okay so we want this here and we're going to kind of lock stuff in place so this will be this will be pretty good this will be good so now we're going to cut our um cordage now i'm not going to be exact on the measurements here because i do want to show splicing in case you do have a really really long piece and uh it just it can be kind of a hassle trying to move all that cordage with, with a long piece that you're trying to weave so splicing might be useful so i'm going to show that so i'm going to grab my uh, cordage here again And I'm gonna do about 12 feet, and I'm just measuring from uh, arm arm span to arm span, which on my body is approximately six feet. About it's not exact, but you can kind of measure. It's important to know your own body measurements. That way, you can have an idea of what you're measuring um, when you don't have an exact ruler or something. Uh, usually, one's arm span is one's height. I'm not quite six feet, but so that's why I say it's approximate. It's about. 10 and about 11 feet or so. so pull this cordage next to me so I don't have to reach for it be all out of frame all right so now we have our cordage I know this won't last for the whole weaving process so I can demo how to splice so we're going to take this knotted in here and I want to place it between my toe here like that and then I'm gonna start up here and I want everything nice and put this in the middle. I want everything nice and kind of taut. I'm gonna try to grab everything in one finger, like so. And it's okay if it crisscrosses, that's fine. Okay. So then I want to take my weaver here, and I'm just going to just go up, and I'm gonna go, I'm going upwards on this end here. Okay, and I'm gonna go just down like so. And I wanna kind of cinch this and match it up with this end here. Okay, so I've got this for configuration. Okay, so I'm gonna hold on to these two. All right, and then I'm gonna find my other end and then I'm gonna go over. Okay, so I'm gonna go over under and then over so I'm gonna pull this through this is really simple because it's only three strands that we have to weave right but then I want to pull this tight start to try to lock things in and then I want to find my end again and then I want to come up again on the other side okay I'm gonna be in frame here I'm gonna come up under and then down and then pull through okay so it's, if you're done weaving before this makes total sense all right now for a strap you don't have to weave you know you could braid you could do a, a five strand braid a four strand braid six strand braid depending on the thickness of the cordage you could do just a regular three strand braid and that would work perfectly fine as a, a, a strap of any kind that you need okay move over get better into frame here I'm gonna zoom out a bit here for you there we go sorry about that okay so now again just gonna start over just gonna go up and go if I if I'm under I go over under over real simple pull it through okay so that was the start I'm not going to bore you with this whole process right so you pull it through you want to take your fingers 
once it's locked in, because it's locked in now, take your fingers and then start to choke up towards you. And then to cinch everything down, you want it tight. And then now I want to come up under and then go over the middle one, go under the last one. Okay, so I'm working from right to left. Move my fingers out of the way and then just pull it, just pull it straight. You'll need to adjust the strands, oops, except the middle one. Be mindful of the middle one because we didn't knot that and I did that on purpose. I didn't want it knotted. But we want to make sure that um, you pull these strands to make them nice and tight. Okay, I don't want to knot the uh, middle one yet. Okay, last time I'm going to show you, we're just going to go over, under, over, and I'm going to go ahead and um, finish this or get close to being done and until I come to a need to splice it, then I'll show how to splice and then we'll work on finishing it off. And we'll come back around underneath, over the middle one and underneath the last one on my right. Like that. Take this. And so you can make some adjustments because this, this type of corded is really tough and dense, but if you're going to use this for like a strap for a pack or basket or bag, heavy bag or something like that, then you'll you'll want that. Okay. So I want to flatten this out. Okay. Okay. Over. Under. Over. Then under over the middle one and under the strand on my right. Cool. And then we can cinch it down. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and work this and finish this off, or get to a point where we should we need to splice and now. Okay, so we're coming up on a, a splice here, an ending point for the first length that we have. And so this is going to be pretty short here. So what I'm going to do is this is going to go under, right? And then it's going to come up. And when it comes up underneath the middle, I want to go back in between this one here so I'm gonna weave this around and through that one just in this hole that opening okay so again I'm going up and under and then I'm going to just kind of crisscross it back and tuck it underneath there okay and then I'm gonna pull it tight and then cinch it okay all right, so now I've got another strand, so that's gonna lock it into place. So this is the length that we've got so far for a three strand strap. Okay, um, so I've got my other length of cordage a little longer this time, around 15 feet or so. It should be enough to finish this, I think. Um, now, I kinda wanna finish this pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the opening where and I'm using the scissors here to point. So this this loop here, I don't know if you can see I'm gonna take this off my toe so it's easier to see. Alright. So this is where this one ended. Okay. So I'm kind of crisscrossing. Now I want to insert my new piece there. The little bit of length there. And then I can pull this tight and it'll cinch it. And then I can continue on the same path. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this length over here. And what I mean by that is this is going to, that went under this, the original one went under, this is gonna go under and then over. And then we're just gonna continue that, uh, the, the weave pattern from there. And then as we cinch, it'll lock that new piece into place. 
little longer piece here, so it's going to take a while to put that through. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put this back on my toe and uh, get to carry on. Okay. You want to kind of cinch this up. Make sure everything is nice and tight. Okay. So it looks pretty seamless. It looks pretty seamless. It's kind of hard to tell if there's a splice there unless you look on the other end. Okay. So then from there, I'm going to grab the other end here, and then I'm going to continue to go under. I'm going to start my weave again, as if nothing happened. So it was basically like, think of like folding your arms, so it was kind of like that. So I just kind of folded the, the uh, cordage in a way that it looked like were, the arms were folded. tight and cinch okay and I will just carry on and everything should be copacetic from there so um, I'm gonna finish this up until we get to the end and when we'll finish it off okay so we're about um, to the end here because what's happening is it's wanting to get wider um, as it's going closer to my foot um, so I want to keep I want to kind of keep it as uniform as possible and so uh, I'm gonna take it off of my foot here and we're gonna kind of free weave this a little bit and taper it just a little bit so we kind of got this going on and if this was a more softer material to work with not so dense it'd be a little bit easier to kind of deal with but this this um, kind of rope is a little tough but again if you want a good sturdy strap then I guess that's what you gotta you gotta work with right so I'm just gonna push this down and I'm gonna come back up the other way like so okay. keep this together now force everything down force everything down and tight <clears throat> I think I'm gonna do one more one more pass through forward the uh, right and then left and then we're gonna tie this off so I'm gonna go down and then up this through, push it down, and then go back one more time, go up and over the middle and down, all right, and then cinch everything down. Okay, that'll give us kind of a nice little, nice kind of taper, a little bit. Okay, so this is what we've got here. It's pretty plenty long enough for my head. Um, so I'm gonna gonna tuck this in. It's gonna be a little hard to see, but I basically want to take my cord. I want to make sure everything's really tight. Okay, I want to find an opening uh, right there. I want to take my other my end here. I'm going to pass it through that opening. Let's see, that'll actually no, we want to keep the weave consistent. So I want to go down. Uh, yeah. Actually, no. I want to go like I'm going through again and then go up. Go underneath the middle and then tuck it behind here 
So it's going to look like this. So I'm going back through again underneath the middle and it's going down in here. Hope that's easy enough. Makes sense. And then now I can pull everything down, push the rope through. Start to cinch it down. That's good enough. Okay, so now what we're gonna want to do is we want to want to start to tuck our our uh, ends. We want to start to hide them. So what I'll need is um I'm gonna need a, a stick or a chopstick to open up some areas in the back part of our um of our of our strap here, and then I want to start to kind of tuck things away so that they stay locked in and they it doesn't look so rough. All right, so the first ones I'm going to start off with, and I may not spend a whole lot of time on camera doing this, but I want to give you the concept here. So basically, I've got a tool, which is a thicker chopstick here. And what I want to do is I want to um, open up an area on one of these strands here. And I kind of want to kind of use the chopstick to open up some space um, so that I can tuck this underneath there and open up space so I can push this one down up in there all right you can see that and it probably will be the one closest to it I think yeah that'll make it more tighter so this one I should be able to force this down up in here I may have to wrestle with it a little bit but um, I want to push this in here right so I can kind of force this through which creates an opening for me to uh, hopefully force this through um, what I can do sometimes you can push it force this in there make it sure it's big enough and we'll make it happen there we go we made it happen All right. and there it is it's in there it's not gonna go anywhere and then what I could do is I kind of could snip the black part of this duct tape off so it doesn't look so uh, tacky um, and I would do the same thing with this one here. Okay. Now for the end here pieces, I'm gonna leave this knot here for the middle strand at, at the top. This that was this the, was the end that was in my hand, and I'm gonna do the same thing. You could weave this in and out of a couple of these if you really want to lock it in there. All right. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same for this end here. Right. This end was on my foot. So what I want to do is I want to take this and loose in here and I want to do the same thing with a chopstick, tuck it underneath. I want to take this, I'm going to undo these, take this end, find uh, a, a strand, a weaver, make space, tuck those in and do the same thing for the last. So that's really how we're going to kind of lock off and finish this piece. Okay. So I've got these two pieces tucked in like this, okay? And then at the top piece, I've got these pieces tucked in like that, okay? And again, I'm just using a, a tool to lift up the cross strands. And uh, this is the middle one, which we're just gonna tie off at the top to be consistent with how this is tied off on this other end here. And then I'm just gonna uh, show you how I'm working this through on this side here. All right. So again, I'm finding the very next one. I'm taking my tool and I'm just going to slowly work this in. I don't want to break this chopstick, but yeah, I just want to kind of, since it tapers, it's going to slowly give me some space that I can work with. Kind of do that. And I'm going to do it one last time. Skip one, go to another cross weaver, lift it up a little bit, and then do it again, make sure we don't have to struggle. And then there we go, voila. 
and tuck that in there. And then, yeah, now we got a nice way to kind of end this off. Pull this a little tight here. There, okay. So now we'll just take this piece here and we'll just put an overhand knot or a double overhand knot, doesn't matter, just to kind of finish this off here. And very similar to the way we started on the opposite end, okay? And then I just take my scissors here and I can go ahead and cut this. I don't care if I phrase at this point. And then same thing with these here. Since we tuck these, it'll be a while for them to jim themselves loose. So I'll just cut these. You don't see the, the black anymore on here. Cut this one here. This is kind of short. I mean, just leave that there. You see a little bit of black. But this one here, just cut that one off. Oops, a daisy. Cut that one off. And then cut this one at the very end off. There. So, there we have it. We have our strap, uh, head strap here. And uh, again, one side I would consider the top. This would be the considered the top part and then where we tucked everything would be the back part. And uh, now to make this usable, um, what, I, what I would do then is I would get another length of cordage, okay? And however long, right? And um, I would run this cordage from run in, find a middle spot, uh, and open and you know tuck it in like we did before just now, and then tuck it in between the weavers here. And then so now what happens is I have cordage that will be supported like so, and then I can. This is rough, so I put some, a cloth, like a, a headband or head wrap uh, around my head. If this was softer material, it wouldn't matter, but this stuff is really rough and itchy. Um, <laughs> it's not a very good sweatband. But so you'd have to take a cloth sweatband, put it as a barrier between your forehead and this um, this strap here. And this would be kind of the, the this since it's wide, it's going to disperse the weight. Um, and so you don't have the rope cutting into your face or anything like that. And then this other end would be used to bundle your um, uh, whatever you're trying to carry. Usually long objects, um, you know, sticks, firewood, you know, logs, that sort of thing. So um, I'm going to kind of put that together and then uh, that's about it. So this is how you, this is how you make it.